live from Buffalo, <laughs> where urban renewal includes the replacing of the plastic flamingos in front of City Hall. <laughs> Meditation is nothing more than sitting in one spot with your hands folded, thinking of nothing. A widespread practice in Washington for years. <laughs> You see, the Russians are the bad communists, and the Chinese are the good communists. <laughs> Russia is the evil empire, and we walk hand in hand with China. You know why? China buys more Pepsi from us. <laughs> yeah. The media is engaged in a project lately, and you're probably aware of it, called Hands Across America to Fight Illiteracy. Have you hugged an illiterate person today? No, but I did the next best thing. I shook hands with a college athlete. <laughs> they will finance health care for poor people without insurance by cutting it from poor people with insurance. <laughs> I tell you, this crowd would put a boot on a parked ambulance. Now, one of the... <laughs> Gingrich then made a statement saying that all this talk about a mutiny was about as false, as he put it, as that picture of him in the movie Men in Black in which he is depicted as a space alien, which begs the question if Newt has to publicly deny <laughs> that he's a space alien, should he really be Speaker of the House in the first place? I bring you glad tidings from our nation's capital. And it occurred to me last week, watching the Academy Awards, that seeing one flew over the cuckoo's nest in Washington is a bit redundant. <laughs> and let me read this uh, headline from the newspaper so I get it right. Falwell blasts Tinky Winky <laughs> as a gay Teletubby. A headline which cannot be improved upon. Now, what it is, Tinky Winky is a character on a children's television show on PBS, by the way, called Teletubbies. And Jerry Falwell says that Tinky Winky is gay because he carries a purse. The antenna on his head is a triangle, a gay pride symbol, and he is purple, a gay pride color. And Falwell is white a homophobic color. Now, I'm having trouble. <laughs> I'm having trouble these days telling the difference between some of these preachers and the cartoons. Now, <laughs> now the producer of Teletubbies, he held a press conference, and he said, no, uh, Mr. Winky. <laughs> Mr. Winky, I read this in the New York Times. Mr. Winky uh, does not carry a purse. He's carrying his magic bag. So, so there, so, so tink, Tinky Winky is, is not gay. Um, as for the Pillsbury Doughboy, uh, I don't know and I don't care. And I don't know what the Reverend Falwell carries in his magic bag, but he shouldn't smoke it while he's watching children's television. Thank you very much. None of these stories I've discussed so far tonight constitute the lead story out of Washington, none of them. The number one story, the story that most captured the public's attention in recent weeks took place 30 miles outside of Washington in the little town of Manassas, Virginia. <laughs> and the trial of Lorena Bobbitt. Now, I hate that story. I never touched it. For six months, I never mentioned that up here. Did I ever discuss that story? But to ignore the Lorena Bobbitt story now would be a, like ignoring a dead elephant in my living room. And so <laughs> I would like to discuss this story on a higher level. <laughs> we are PBS, and so I'd like to discuss it on a more intellectual level. When Lorena Bobbitt goes bob, bob, bobbing along, along, she was not convicted for the wound inflicted. He done her wrong. No, no, not so. She will go free six weeks in some observatory. No sweat is was insanity. A slap on the wrist as if she had missed. <laughs> 
We will all remember that famous member for years to come. How the press belabored Lorena's saber till we were numb. John was disconnected and politically corrected what's right and what's wrong. When Lorena Bobbitt goes bob, bob, bobbin, she was bobbin while he was throbbing. When Lorena Bobbitt goes bob, bob, bobbin along. I am the very model of a candidate political. I act upon the premise that the public is uncritical. I shy away from concepts such as verbal specificity and always smile accordingly at charges of duplicity. In neighborhoods where I believe that I can speak with surety, I tell them as a gentleman that I'm for ethnic purity. But if a lass a storm grows up and someone is offended, sir, I simply say I'm sorry, that is not what I intended, sir. On questions controversial, my response is often mystical. It's best to be equivocal and shun reply statistical. On both sides of a question, I can speak with brash impunity. And I can sing a different song and please each damn community. I plan to say what pleases every different kind of resident until I con enough of them to vote for me as president. In short, because I bear in mind that winning's very critical, I am the very model of a candidate political. Uh, let me explain what these are. As you may or may not know, public television is under attack in Congress. The funding uh, from the federal government is affected because of allegations that on public television there is too much liberal bias. Uh, you've heard the stories that uh, Julia Child's chickens only have left wings and things like that. So, <laughs> So I'm, I'm very cognizant of this, and I'm very concerned about it, and I don't want to be charged with being uh, you know, too left-wing by it. So I've come up with a self-monitoring system here this evening uh, with these little bells. So if I have a reference or a joke about a conservative, then I myself will keep track by this. Little conservative. Uh, liberal, more raucous, you know, like that. So, um, so, we'll, uh, so we'll begin the show uh, right now. Here we go. <clears throat> This just in, Bill Clinton <laughs> has denied dodging the draft and smoking marijuana with his brother at an all-white country club after a one-night stand before doing business with a savings and loan <laughs> whose lawyer was his wife, Hillary. <laughs> yeah, and it's only April. Well, uh, Clinton had laryngitis last week, and his doctor told him in order to save his voice, not to deny anything for five days. <laughs> There's an old saying in my business, you gotta know your audience. And by golly, I know a Ross Perot rally when I see one. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I did not do what we always do here in Buffalo. Every election year, we take a poll. And let me tell you something, we've been doing these polls for a lot of elections, and every time the Buffalo audience votes, it, it, that's what happens in November. And this across the board, Ronald Reagan, George Bush Sr., uh, and, and, and Bill Clinton, and, and you name it, this audience, so this is a pretty good barometer. What we do this, I, I, a lot of you know each other, you all know each other here, and you might, you might not want to vote when other people see you, so <laughs> what we do, we ask you to close your eyes while you're voting. Right? <laughs> All right. Election will be all tomorrow. How many in here will vote for Ralph Nader? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good man. Good man. George W. Bush! John Kerry! They're holding up a sign. We have some folks from the Nielsen rating here tonight. And the winner is Ralph Nader. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Thank you indeed. Thank you. Thanks for coming.